Aloha all. This is podcast number 63, What's Next? So I'm going to do a little disclaimer. This podcast is not just about me talking about post-COVID and vaccines, but I am going to start off a little bit with that. So please be patient and I will get to the juicy stuff. So I want to say that it's almost post-COVID and in the U.S. we're blessed to have had have the ability to have sufficient vaccines if we want them. And I, I do want to take a moment because I do have many of my listeners are in India and uh, Brazil and Africa, different places that are not having such a good, um, as fortunate with the vaccines. And I'm praying that all that changes soon. And anyone who wants this protection and this help that they get it. So that's my greatest prayer for all of you. So now I want to just say that I need to share, I've shared this before, but when I posted on Facebook that I got my first vaccine, like so many people went nuts on their students and clients. And I can't believe of all people, Samani, you're doing that. And I'm like, okay, so I want you to know where I'm coming from. I have been the in the holistic health field my entire life. I have never partaken in a yearly flu shot. My daughter, uh, with the uh, respect and um, confidence in my holistic MD, told me like the basic childhood vaccine, so it wasn't out of control. And, uh, and basically running my two schools for 20 some years in a wellness center and teaching and teaching detox workshops, working with clients, referring supplements and so many different, uh, ways of balancing using various holistic modalities. I know about, uh, you know, acupuncture points and, and Chinese medicine and, and Ayurvedic and, and uh, homeopathic and what else, aromatherapy and just everything, Bach flower remedy, all of those things I've done for so many years. And I will go for that. And I personally, it is a rare event if I ever even take an aspirin, maybe once a year if I need it. And that's only because I worked out too much in my body is so inflamed and I don't have time to do infrared saunas or something. So anyways, uh, it's not my thing. And I still felt very strongly about getting this vaccine. So I want to share something that I've not read about as being common, but my, I totally have experienced, so it's been over 30 days, it's been about 40 days since my second shot, I've gotten the Moderna shot, uh, that my immune system has never felt stronger. Like, I don't know if it was uh, just the experience of having a high fever that like kicked in my system and chills for the 24 hours. But ever since then, I've, I drink less coffee. I love my espresso. Um, but I was up to like three or four shots a day and I only do one or two now, single shots. Uh, I have no craving for sugar or minimal craving for sugar. And my energy is very good. Like it's like it amped it up and, and not like in an anxious way, but in a, it's good and my mind's clear. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. The other plug for getting that vaccine is I was able to go back to Ohio and see my mom and my brother and sister and, and again, without feeling fearful, like the thought of being on a plane and I want to go home to Maui and see all my people and and travel wherever it opens up to me because I that's who I am. So, so at this point, like I'm reading about so many of these states that are opening up uh, and basically saying, okay, COVID's over. Well, it's not over. It's just less occurrences and hospitalization and deaths because people are getting vaccinated, some of them. But the one thing I want to warn you is because the restrictions are gone, are leaving, that 
it says, even the CDC says, if you've been vaccinated, you don't need masks inside or outside. It's a new thing they just said. Okay, so I have my vaccine card in my little, uh, you know, Ziploc sleeve. I carry it in my wallet. People can just say they're vaccinated and they're all going to just go out and say, screw it. I don't believe in this anyways. And they're going to be carriers and spreaders and all those things. And just a little background. I'm sure you know by now, just getting the vaccine doesn't mean you can't get COVID. You can still get COVID, but you'll either be asymptomatic or guaranteed 96 plus percent chance that you're not going to be hospitalized or die. So as I told my daughter, who has been struggling with this, um, getting a vaccine, and I said, listen, I never thought that I would die from COVID because I know I'm strong. I work out, I meditate, I have minimal stress in my life, I eat very well, lots of live food, and, and, um, and my immune system overall is good. And, but I, did, I know many people, unfortunately, uh, different ages, I'm telling you, 20, 30, 40, 70. So how about that for a range? 60. There's another one I just thought of. So all those age ranges that were relatively healthy, physically healthy people got COVID and their lungs are damaged. They have scar tissue. And sometimes it feels like they're breathing fire. Still, one person I know a year later, that's what's happening. And another person was forced to sell their business because they knew instantly there's no way of going back. And that was my fear, is that if I got COVID, and regardless of how intense it was, if it scarred my lungs and it zapped me of physical energy, that to me is death. And I have compassion for everyone out there that's struggling with this, and I'm so sorry. And I would just hope that you share your story so more people get their vaccine. So we're not just getting our vaccine for ourselves to protect protect ourselves, we're protecting those around us that are more vulnerable, our, our friends and our relatives that are older or immune compromised or something. So please think of the whole, think of how, how this is affecting others. So on the bright side of what's next, so one of the things in the post-COVID world or the belief of post-COVID is, is that I came back from Ohio, I celebrated my dad's birthday, which is on Mother's Day, and for the first time in 14 months, there was the seven of us. Instead of, they're at this massage table, these two, these three are at this table, everyone's distance, my dad has his own TV tray off to the side, my boyfriend and I are by ourselves, and then you wonder, like, you don't really connect with too many people. And then I realized being around this whole table together inside, like all ages, 20s, 30s, through my dad's age, that we were all laughing and talking and connecting. And oh my God, was it the greatest feeling ever to have that. And I can't wait to have some of my friends over that are also ready to connect and healthy and getting their vaccines and stuff. I just, I miss it. I miss the hugs. And I think we took that for granted. Like it was kind of a revelation to me that I'm thinking, wait, well, of course the 20 year olds are going to, uh, you know, group up together and not talk to us. Cause like, what fun are we? But that's not it at all. That's never how I raised my kids. And, and we all have things to talk about and have fun. And it was just a reminder of, here we are in a time to be so grateful that we can have these gatherings. And then another thing this week, my boyfriend's extended family was visiting and they invited me on a couple of gatherings and it was so wonderful to hug his dad and, and to have conversations with various ages and play games and and just eat together and laugh together and connect on a multiple range of levels. So that is so wonderful. So I'm grateful. Anyways, so now, now that we are, we are 
moving forward. What's next? So what is next is that please get vaccinated. Like it's again, it's not just you, it's it's those around you. So uh, I guarantee you'll feel safer. And will it last more than a year? I don't know. If we need a booster, we'll get a booster. All I know is, is I was on that plane and I was visiting and I'm in places and I sat inside today and had a salad at a restaurant while I wrote this podcast and none of that scared me. It's like I feel like, wow, this is the real world again. So please, for the health of others and the health of yourselves, um, I want you to consider um, getting your vaccine, even if it, even if it's something that scares you. Don't listen to these Joe Rogan and all this bullshit. Because I'm telling you, what I'm finding is that these like conservative white old men that are saying be free and and don't get the vaccine and causing all this problems because they want the middle class, they want the collective us to be um, mayhem and to be disconnected and fighting and not work as a group. And they're all secretly getting their vaccines. So that's what I call bullshit. And I think it's, it's horrible. Anyways, so I am grateful for my life. I am happy that I have my precious energy so I can hike and bike and paddleboard and swim and walk and have great conversations and mind-blowing sex with my boyfriend and all of these things are are mine and yours for the for the taking so there are high odds against you if you do catch covid that something more compromising could happen so please care for your body and Add to that herd immunity and help the planet, like not just America. This is about the planet. So now, as I promised, um, that we are going to move on to something juicier. So the topic of this podcast of what's next. So I haven't done a podcast since March. So I'm going to say that I apologize if you're one of my followers and looking forward to it. And I'm going to present this to you and put it back on you that if I don't come up with ideas because I feel like I'm saying a little bit of the same thing and I want to stay in the flow, then please contact me. Email me, write me. So you know to email me at samana at s-p-a-l-u-n-a dot com or if you're within the U.S. or have uh, free texting, it's 808-283-7587. And just say, hey, I'm one of your listeners, and this is an idea, this is a topic I'd love to hear, because I have so many people I've gotten, just last week I got three new clients, and they're all, hey, like I've been listening to your podcast, they're really helping, and I would, are you taking new clients, and could you see me? And I'm like, yes. So back to the texting, I want to let you know that my phone is always on silent, so you could text 24 hours a day, doesn't matter what time zone you're in. I'm in central time uh, in the U.S., and I will get back to you. And so give me ideas on what you want to hear on podcasts, or if you need a session, then look me up. I'm here. Okay, so now... Now, 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 what's next? So I do want to say that a couple of sessions I've had in the last uh, month was with people talking about being in a place in their life that they gained a sense of, okay, I know that what was in the past isn't going to happen any longer, and so now how do you move forward? Or we could see that as how do you let go of what was and move on to something new. So saying what's next is not only this post-COVID world, but it's also what's next in your life. Like like where are you at? Um, Where do you feel stuck? And what is it that you are looking for? 
So I find that having a little, I, uh, I'm a proponent of journaling because even if you think that you're thinking it out, when you actually write it out, there is a science to that, that it's actually downloading all of the, just emptying out the brain, clearing the mind so that new things could come up and you could actually see what's happening. When I'm in a place where I'm not certain why I feel tired or why I feel stuck or why there's a deep sadness, I just start writing. And I'm a very fairly conscious person and self-aware. And when I write and I just allow myself free form, no censoring, I end up, when I'm done, I read it out loud back to myself. And I'm always, always surprised because it wasn't quite to my awareness as clear as it was when I wrote it. So, regardless if you are trying to move through past traumas from childhood or from past relationships, or you're in a relationship that is conflicting, or the communication is breaking down, or whatever is happening, and you're just feeling like, wait, I want more, let's look at this as, a, as an exercise of stating that I want to repattern my life and it is necessary to claim what you want fully to live the life you deserve. So ask yourself, are you existing or are you, sorry about that, are you existing or are you fully living? So I have some longtime friends of mine from childhood that we still keep in contact here and there. And there are sometimes we check in and have conversations and I kind of see it's like they never move past when we were in our teens or our 20s or something. And I, and I, I have compassion for them because I wonder like, wow, how much more could they have grown? How many more experiences did they miss out on because they were so attached to that being their their prime time or or when we hung out all the time or or family members of mine that that they're just like they get up, they work, they sleep, they poop, they watch TV and it's like they eat. I look at that as as they're depressed. So depression, in my opinion, is basically a result of ignoring your soul's truth or your most authentic core needs. So the question here is, where is the passion or the joy in your life? So I want you to write down or, or, or think about, ask yourself, if you are existing, just living your obligations every day, paying your bills and thinking and grumbling and all of those things. Like, is, is your capacity to love? Like, I want you to really check in. Is your capacity, has your capacity to give love and receive love increased in your lifetime? Is your toleration for others, your tolerance for other people's views, for their ways, for their cultures, for their skin tone, for their beliefs, is that, um, do you use curiosity to learn something new about someone so foreign to you? Or do you separate and close them out? Like how expanded has your mind become? Do you have moments throughout your day that you feel such gratitude for who you are and for the life that you've created that you actually tear up with so much appreciation? Because I'll tell you, that happens to me on a regular basis. At least one moment throughout the day, I actually start to cry because I'm so happy. I feel so blessed. And it didn't just happen. It's not because I'm lucky. It's because of choices I've made. Because I would see where my mind gets stuck, where I, I can't move forward, and I want to know what's next with me. So 
if this isn't happening to you, perhaps it's time to change that. So what's next? What's next for you? Without using money or a perceived limitation, I want you to get out your pen and paper and I want you to write a list. You could frame it, these are my dreams, these are my bucket list, or you could see it as if if a, a magic genie gave you three wishes towards your authentic fulfillment, what would that be? So not, I want to be a millionaire, because that, that doesn't do anything. That doesn't change anything. Even if you're a millionaire, like really, what is it? I want you to see the details, see it. So I want you to write these things down about what your what will be your most authentic way to to meet your core needs and know that if there's anxiety and depression that that is the body's way of shutting down because the soul is screaming it's calling out it's saying i need something and literally, the body has a mechanism that it shuts down and the symptoms could be constipation or fatigue or you have inflammation in your body with body aches all the time. Your mind is foggy. You forget things. You can't focus. These are all mechanisms that your system creates so that it doesn't have to feel what the soul is screaming to you. So... It feels physical pain. It feels the discomfort of, of my stomach screwed up or my mind's foggy or I'm so tired or my back hurts or whatever it is. But it doesn't, it doesn't allow yourself to focus on the emotional feeling. What is the soul's despair? What is causing that? So in this list, after you write, these are my dreams to create the most fulfilling life. This is what I want next. I want you to also write a list to notice all of the excuses or your sabotage thoughts that come up. So those could be things like, I'm broke, I'm a mess, I'm lonely, I'm old, I'm fat, I'm in pain, I'm invisible. I'm powerless. Whatever your story is, which is not the truth, but it's a tape, it's a pattern in your head, whatever that is, next to that, so be really bottom line, ruthless, raw self-honesty. Notice what that inner phrase is, why you feel guilty, why you feel not good enough, unlovable, unworthy. And next to that, I want you to ask yourself, is this true? So this is a Byron Katie technique for some of you, is where it is this true? And answer it in degrees of either, no, it's not true. Like when you really look at them separately, no, it's not true that I'm powerless. No, it's not true that I'm old. Am I older than I was? Yes, we all are. But if you rate it on a scale of one to five, and five being most true to you, and one being it's just a fragment in there, then I want you to see, because this will logically show your mind, these tapes, these negative phrases, that are blocking your ability to create and manifest your joyful, flowing, moving forward world. And next, each of those negative tapes, those, those sabotage thoughts, I also want you to write, when did this first occur? Who taught you that? Who said that to you originally? Really look at those things because we are not designed by God or the creator or however you believe to come in and self-destruct and say negative thinking to ourselves. That is a, a 
That is a learned behavior that we either see our parents do or someone at a young age started saying to us or an, or an ex or something that we, we gave them too much authority over us and we started believing what they were saying, those negative things. So if you can see who taught you that, where did this originate? Where did this begin? Who said that first? And really have the balls to name it. I also want you to ask, how helpful is this in living with your highest reality? How helpful is this having these negative programmed thoughts in really living your dream, living your fullest life? How can you have what's next if your mind, every time you have one moment of, okay, I have this creative energy, it's like this wonderful waterfall and I can do anything, and then a second later or later in the day, it ends up, those thoughts come back. Who are you kidding? You can't do this alone. You always, you're a failure and your mind will get stuck. So I want you to harness your mind this little steel trap that is relentless, that gets filled with a negative familiarity, and I want you to use your beautiful collective conscious, your awareness, to harness that mind. Use the same energy. This is like a, 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 a Taoist move, a Tai Chi move, to use the energy for your good. So use that same fixed mind energy and redirect it in a way to logically see what thoughts and outdated beliefs are stopping you from what's next, from really seeing what's next. Do you know that unless you ask yourself the question, unless you allow questions to come to you, we will stay in the same uh, same patterned behavior, lifestyle, outlook, perceptions. It's the questions that are the journey. Those are the ones I love. So any of you that I've worked with couples, with partners, with parent children, with coworkers, with siblings that we've done uh, counseling, relationship counseling with communication, I have a session. This is how I do it. I do one session with each of you individually so that it's just you and I and we really and I do this on Zoom so this could be anywhere in the world and I really get to hear what your heartache is like what is your what needs aren't being met how what's happening how you perceive the other person as blocking you or limiting your joy and then I will come up after I do both sessions with both of you, I will come up with a series of eight or nine questions specifically to what I'm hearing both of you say. And I have you answer those authentically without sharing them with each other. And then we get together and we do a session with the three of us. And I will teach you reflective listening. You've heard me say this many times where you speak with me as your support system, as your coach, so that everything's safe and I will stop you if you get into a negative pattern or a blame or a anger or, or not allowing the other person to speak or you interrupt them. I will stop all of that and teach you how to communicate properly. So when you have that, you will see, wait a minute. I mean, you start to cry because you're like, wait, they're really listening to me. This is what I've always wanted. So I want you to see within yourself, you are, this is the relationship within yourself that you are going to ask, what is it I really want? What is my deepest heart's desire? And in addition to that, I want you to see if this is my deep wish or, or, or need, my ultimate need, is there someone else involved in my story, in my creation, that you believe is preventing this 
this fulfilled life that you want. If there is a person that you believe this is not their view, this is why it can't happen, then I want you to write their name down next to it, next to the dream that you want. And then you need to reflect on how much power are you giving away of your own power? How much power are you giving another person to have an authority over you, over your happiness and your needs? And ask yourself, what matters more? The person's, the person's view, the person's need, or you creating what's next and manifesting a life that you are excited to wake up every day and take in more and more new experiences and meeting new people and learning new things, a new language, painting, dancing, uh, singing, uh, a new sport, pickleball, tennis, running, a new hike, whatever it is. Something new and exciting that it makes your heart sing. And I want you to ask, ask for what you want. So in the spiritual realm, they talk about how one manifests and the laws of manifesting and creating your reality is three steps. Ask for what you want. Believe that this can be so, that you deserve this, believe with no doubt, and receive. So it's ask, believe, and receive, and you make it happen. You're the badass creator of your existence. Life is too short. You may be very attached to a person or, or a belief of a story that you have wanted for a long time, and I want you to see that is it more important to, to keep waiting and hoping that that changes, that this person will see and come as this uh, ultimate person authority to say, I just want you to be happy, whatever you want, or are you going to say, this is what I'm claiming and what I want? So, any of you that need support, that you need insight or guidance, call me for a session. I am taking on new clients. I charge $100 an hour. Now for couples, I always charge $100 an hour because sometimes we go into an hour and a half. For individuals, it's $100 for one, or I say after your first session, if you love it, and it rings true to you, and my words are helping you everything light up and make sense, then I offer two sessions, two one-hour sessions for $150, so that's only $75 a piece. And I'm doing a referral summer special because I want a lot more new clients. That's my prayer is may I help all who, who need it, who need my gifts. Let me help them. So from May through July, every two people you refer to me, so every time someone contacts me, I say, how did you hear about me? And when they say a name, I write it next to your name so that I know who you referred. And when you refer two people to me as clients and they do a session, I will give you one free one-hour session that you could keep when you're really struggling or you need a tune-up, or you could give it as a gift to someone, which is quite beautiful. So again, contact me, 808-283-7587. And so many blessings to all of you and aloha and contact me with your ideas for podcast topics and I'll keep going. Blessings.